Wasabi wallet. Unfairly private. Once you've bought Bitcoin and gotten it into your own custody, the next logical step is to look into a hardware wallet to secure it. Now, these are physical devices that secure the keys to your money completely offline. There are many options out there and it can be quite the task trying to decipher which one would be best for you. So I've put together a list of my top five most used and trusted hardware wallets. I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions and this is your daily session. HODL THE BITCOIN When it comes to hardware wallets, there isn't really a one-size-fits-all solution. Everyone is going to be coming at this from a different angle. Some of you may be newcomers that just need something that works out of the box and you don't really have use for most advanced functions. Whereas others of you may be hardcore Bitcoiners that really want those advanced features and want the most out of their hardware wallet, even if it's not as user-friendly. This list of five items that I put together is in no particular order and it's kind of up to you to decide what is the best fit for where you're coming to Bitcoin from. Uh, so now, without further ado, here is my list of the top five most trusted and most used for myself Bitcoin hardware wallets. Now, before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a variety of different services. They have Bitcoin-backed loans where you can use your Bitcoin as collateral to obtain a Canadian or U.S. dollar loan. So if you're in a pinch and you need dollars, but you don't want to sell your Bitcoin because one, that's a taxable event, and two, you're worried about having to buy back in at a higher price, that could be for you. Very simple. Deposit get dollars into your bank account, and when you pay back those dollars, you'll get back the exact same amount of Bitcoin. Now, they've also got Bitcoin and USDC savings accounts with interest rates of up to 11.7% annually paid monthly, and they've got their B2X offering. This uses the same loan mechanism to instantly buy more Bitcoin, effectively doubling your Bitcoin on the spot. If you want to check them out, there's a link in the show notes down below. If you click that and you opt to get one of their loan products, they will give you 25 bucks worth of USDC direct into your savings account for free. Up next, we have the Kobo Vault. This is a hardware wallet. Now, these guys have been partnered with the show for a while. I'm not going to let the sponsorship impact what I say in the show. So I'm going to leave my pitch for them basically until I start talking about their hardware wallet because they are one of the ones I use the most. Uh, but <laughs> I guess you'll find out more about them in a minute. And finally, we've got Crypto Cloaks. These guys are so awesome. These are a bunch of hardcore Bitcoiners with 3D printers that started printing out incredible swag. It's some of my favorite Bitcoin stuff out there. They have node shells. They have the little Bitcoin grenades where you can put little gifts inside of them. Uh, the Honey Badger shelving unit. They've got the Citadel flag, covers for your hardware wallets, coasters, nightlights, a little bit of everything for everyone. So I highly encourage you to head over to CryptoCloaks.com. And if you want to deal at the checkout, just use the code BTC Sessions, all one word for a 5% discount. And with that, Let's dive into the list. First up on our list is the Ledger Nano X. Now, Ledger has been a company in the space for quite some time. They've been making hardware for years. In fact, one of my first hardware wallets was from Ledger, and the Nano X is just their latest entry into the fray here. Now, this device is Bluetooth and wired, so you have the option for either. Now, some people have problem with the idea of Bluetooth in a hardware wallet, but you can disable it if you so choose. And they have a dedicated application both for mobile and for your desktop. Now, it does have a secure chip in it, but some of the firmware is not open source. Um, it runs on an app system. So for myself, I only use Bitcoin. And so I only install the Bitcoin app, but you do have the option to install for other coins. Some people see that as a security risk if you're installing other coins, while others do not. Um, now, it is very, very user-friendly when it comes to the app on the phone and on the desktop, uh, but for those of you that want more advanced features, you can also use it in concert with a number of other wallet options on your desktop. So 
some versatility here for myself. I tend to utilize it for demos and if I need to go somewhere and I prefer not having a ton of Bitcoin just on my phone if I need to go somewhere and make a transaction and it's a little bit over my threshold for comfort of what I'm holding on a hot wallet, then I will go with the Nano X, um, especially if I'm not bringing my laptop with me. So um, yeah, it's a regularly used one for me. I quite enjoy it and it's for me very noob friendly. So those of you that are just entering into Bitcoin and need something kind of out of the box, this could be an option for you. Trezor is another veteran of the Bitcoin hardware wallet space and the Model T is their latest entry into this realm. Now the Model T boasts a touch screen which makes it quite easy to interact with when inputting pin numbers and anything of the sort. Uh, it is fully open source though to attain that fully open source title they do have to forego a secure chip. Um, they are You interact with the Trezor via their web interface for now. So that means any web browser you can utilize and plug in your tre Trezor. By the way, the Trezor is plug-in only, no Bluetooth, anything like that. Um, now they are migrating to a native app on the desktop. In fact, by the time you see this video, that may have already happened for everybody, but currently it is still the web interface. Um, and I believe that they're migrating to a native app because it helps protect against phishing attack, attacks, which means if you go to the wrong website and in plug, uh, plug in your Trezor, you could be uh, coaxed into giving information to somebody who should not have it. So um, having native software can help mitigate that risk. I would say that the Trezor is very, very noob friendly. So those of you that are new to Bitcoin, this could be another option for you. Um, but those of you that need some of those advanced features, you can still use the Trezor with some other software options out there on desktop. Now, Trezor does have Bitcoin only firmware, which I highly recommend you use. But for those of you that are in altcoins, God forbid, uh, you can have their regular firmware which allows for all of the other coins. Um, personally, obviously myself, I'm using Bitcoin only. Um, so yeah, newbies, Trezor, good option. Ledger, good option. But let's move on to the next. The Bitbox O2, as suggested by the name, is the second entry from Shift Crypto into the hardware wallet space. Now this is a huge improvement over their first iteration. It does have touch buttons on the side. It plugs into a phone and or a laptop with USB-C of which both it has dedicated applications for. Now, one of the main things about the Bitbox O2 that is nice is it has very simple uh, micro SD card backups. So you don't actually have physical written backups. You have uh, just an SD card and you can create as many as you like. Now, a few other things about it. Um, it is interoperable again with a variety of different uh, other options for Bitcoin wallets outside of its own dedicated app. Um, it does have some more advanced features just kind of built natively into its app, things like coin control and connecting to your own nodes. So those of you that are a bit more advanced will enjoy those, but they don't kind of infringe on the easiness of utilizing the app. Um, and overall, I found it to be a pretty easy experience in using the BitBox. Um, it's not one of my regularly used wallets, but uh, I use it a lot for demos and I play around with it a lot. And I can definitely see why somebody would use it the, quite a bit as their regular wallet. It just happened to not sit in that category for me. But still, again, top five for me, uh, no question. Um, those of you that are newcomers, I think that you also have a fine time with this. I think that it will work uh, just great for you. And with those natively built in advanced features that don't really infringe on um, the usability, I think it's a good kind of middle ground option for everyone. Now, those of you that have been watching the show for a while, you'll know that Kobo is indeed a sponsor of the show, but I don't want to let that uh, interrupt the integrity of this actual video. Um, so I'll just kind of let the device speak for itself and just know that it hasn't had any bearing on how I'm representing it here. So Kobo Vault is a hardware wallet that has been around for a while. It is the second iteration. I much appreciate uh, the 
improvements that they've made over their first iteration. I did try the first Kobo Vault. I did enjoy it, but I wasn't totally sold. And with their newest iteration, I enjoy it quite a bit more. I found it um, much more to my liking. So a few of the things that are good about the Kobo Vault that I really like is the fact that it's air gapped, meaning that you never plug it into an internet connected device. Everything is done via QR code. And so though it does give an extra few steps in sending and uh, mostly just sending transactions, the additional security afforded to you while doing that is vast. Now, uh, the Pro version does have a fingerprint scanner and a rechargeable battery, which I found to be very nice. Given that it's not plugged into any device, it needs to be independently charged and powered, okay? Now, it does have a secure chip and uh, the firmware itself is open source. They do have a Bitcoin only option for the firmware. I highly recommend that you utilize that one versus the multi-coin one. Again, just my personal perspective. Um, and when it comes to the dedicated app, while good, I much prefer using the Kobo Vault with other external software. So I use it regularly with Wasabi Wallet and Blue Wallet. Wasabi being desktop and Blue Wallet being on uh, your mobile. And so I found it very versatile in that respect and I get to use it with a lot of the advanced features that I prefer. But if you are a newcomer, then the dedicated app is one that I think you'll have no trouble really navigating. So for me, the Kobo sits kind of nicely in the middle where it's advanced and gives me everything I need for what I need to use but I can see a newcomer utilizing it um, with the dedicated app with no major issues. And in fact, even utilizing it with something like Blue Wallet and still being able to operate it very, very simply while having that additional security of using it via an air gap. So uh, yeah, highly recommend Kobo. And it, it, it's kind of, again, that middle ground where it's easy, but also offers advanced features. Now, the cold card wallet has for a while now been kind of known amongst hardcore Bitcoiners as like the gold standard of hardware wallets. Now it's a very unassuming form factor. It's basically a tiny little calculator looking thing, uh, but the security on this thing and the way it's designed is it really beckons back to the cypherpunk roots of Bitcoin. So hardcore Bitcoin users that want the most out of their Bitcoin hardware wallet are going to gravitate towards the cold card. So um, I've got a list of things here. Uh, it's, it is air gapped, but it has the option of being wired. So you kind of got both options there. Now the air gap is done via an SD card. So you're going to be plugging in an SD card back and forth between a laptop in order to achieve that additional security. It is a little bit more of a process and a little bit more complicated with the sub menus and everything on the cold card than just scanning QR codes via the Kobo. But it does give you again that option to plug in if you so choose. Now, um, again, secure chip firmware is open source. Uh, there is no option to have altcoins on this. And I see that as a feature, not a bug. Um, there is no dedicated app to use the cold card, whether it be on mobile or on your desktop. And that is meant to be that way. You utilize the cold card with a variety of other uh, options on your desktop. So one might be Electrum Wallet or Wasabi Wallet. Personally, for me, it's Wasabi, uh, but you can use it with a lot of different options when it comes to software. Just there is no official cold card app that you download. Um, so in my recommendation, I'd go with something like Wasabi, uh, but Electrum will serve you just fine. And there are other options out there. Um, Again, for vets, this is probably where you're going to end up. I'd say either here or like a Kobo is probably what you're going to gravitate towards. Um, it's also, I would say, if you're early in Bitcoin, but you want to kind of get a head start on that learning curve and actually really understand how Bitcoin is working under the hood, it would be invaluable to jump to something like a cold card initially right off the hop because while it will be more difficult at first you'll be able to wrap your head around things a little bit quicker now i should say that all of the options here every other hardware wallet that i've talked 
about can be used in concert with something like Wasabi Wallet or Electrum Wallet on desktop so that you get the same learning curve. But if you're using the dedicated app of any of the others, you may not get that learning curve right off the bat. You things will be simplified a little bit for you and that may impede your learning or at least put off some of those processes. So again, hardcore Bitcoiners look here and those that are looking to learn quickly also look here, but expect a little bit of a, uh, a, a <laughs> you're going to go off the beaten path initially. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be lots of people that can help you along the way. And the guys at Cold Card are great with that. Uh, but just be prepared. There is some learning to do if you are new to Bitcoin and you're diving into a cold card right away. Now, in addition to my explanations on this video, I also have full step-by-step -step tutorials for every single hardware wallet featured here. You can find those in the show notes down below. I also have linked to a blog post which features this video and all of those subsequent step-by-step -step tutorials. So you can feel free to share any of that to anyone that may find use for that. And I hope that this kind of summary and overview of a bunch of different hardware wallets has been helpful for you and will help you on your path to figuring out which is best. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do remember to like, subscribe, and share. All of those things really do help and they help bump up videos like this to get them in front of more eyeballs and help more people. So please, please do those things. Now, if you wanna help out the show in another way, as before, uh, you can hit up the sponsors I mentioned down below. That was Ledin, that was Crypto Cloaks, and that was, of course, Kobo. And if you really liked what you saw, you can hit me up with a Bitcoin Lightning Network tip at my tippin.me page. That is T-I-P-P-I-N dot me slash at BTC sessions. With that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you next time for your daily session. Bitcoin.